guys it's Amaya. welcome back to today's video and happy halloween the day that you guys are seeing this it is halloween so happy halloween um but with that being said november is literally tomorrow and that means thanksgiving every november i host a friendsgiving this will be my third time hosting friendsgiving and i thought why not share my tricks and tips with you guys to host the most fun friendsgiving now in advance my friendsgivings are kind of big and elaborate yours do not have to be whatsoever but i thought i love planning parties you might love planning parties if this is your first time planning friendsgiving here are some things that I've learned throughout the years. Today's video, I'm showing you how to throw a Friendsgiving. It's what I've planned so far for this year. And then I'll do another video the day of my Friendsgiving and show you how it all came together. So this is gonna be like a two part video. But before we begin, make sure that you subscribe, hit that bell to get notified when I post, give this video a thumbs up and follow me on all my social medias or you can do it at the end of the video as well um but i know i haven't posted in a while i'm back so here i am back planning a friendsgiving and i thought why not share with you so that's what i'm going to do today so sorry that i've been gone if you're subscribed already thank you if you're not yet make sure you subscribe and yeah i'm so excited for today's video let's get in some tricks and tips for hosting a friendsgiving Let's begin. First things first when planning a Friendsgiving is you need a guest list. Who do you want to bring together to have a fun time, have some great food, and hang out with? I went ahead and made a list of all of my friends who I talk to the most. Um, and this is also a big friend group of all of us together. We all hang out together with one another with that being bonfires or other parties I host or when we watch Andrew's fight. These are all the people who I usually invite. When making a guest list, you want to think of their plus ones if they have any or if they wanted to bring an extra friend or uh, someone that they might be seeing. Always expect there to be a few people who bring plus ones when making a guest list. As of right now, I think I have about 20-ish people coming to my Friendsgiving. Like I said, I always make really big Friendsgivings. If you want to have it just a girls' night Friendsgiving or a boys' night Friendsgiving or just your closest three best friends and have a little Friendsgiving, by all means do that. But I love having like big parties and having everyone come together and have a meal together or like watch something together. With that being my boyfriend Andrew's fights whenever he has them live on like UFC Fight Pass or when we have like a, someone's birthday party. I love to host. I love to bring everyone together and make more memories, if that makes sense. Um, but by all means, do what you want with your guest list. I am not judging. Okay, step two. Once you have made your guest list, I love to use things that are very organized. I love having all of my stuff organized. I love to have everything in one place. Something that has really helped me keeping everything in one place when planning parties is Google Forms. On Google Forms, you can make a little survey questionnaire with all the types of questions you want answered from your friends. When using Google Forms, you'll have everyone's information and answers all in one little document and it keeps everything so organized. It has really helped me throughout the years when to my friends givings because i loved things very organized and i'll show you what i do with my google forms what questions i ask which makes my planning so much easier so let's go make a google form okay here we go so when typing in google you'll go to the dots on the top right corner and scroll all the way down and hit google forms it is the purple little page on the bottom then it will take you to this. As you can see, these are all my recent forms and invites that I've done and surveys. And on top are your templates. I'm using the party invite template. And then I'll show you what I did for 2022 Friendsgiving. So this is what the questionnaire invitation thing looks like. On the top, you can change the title. Mine is just Friendsgiving 2022. And then under that is like a description, just like, hi everyone, I wanna get a head start, blah, blah, blah. Just kind of what this thing is. The first question I ask is, what is your name? And I made it a short answer. There are different types of ways that they can answer, but this one is a short answer. And they would just type in their name at the bottom, which is super easy. And then I make it required so that I know this person has done it. Um, on some of them, I didn't do that. I'll explain later. The next question is what day or days work best for you? I chose three that would work for me and then hoping that they would work for them. This is a checked box answer. So I did Friday, November 18th, 19th, and 20th. And then they would check the boxes of which day or days work for them. This is very helpful and that is also required. Then will you be bringing anyone? 
Um, they would just say who they were bringing and then are you comfortable contributing to the meal? This is a multiple choice. It is required and it's a yes or no type of option. If they are comfortable to bringing something, they would just write that there. But if they said no, that is not required to write in. So they just tell me what they are wanting to bring with a short answer. And then the last one was a big controversy over the Friendsgiving is, do you like sweet potatoes? Please let me know down below if you do or not. But this is a yes or no option. But yeah, that's kind of what I asked this year. Um, super easy, super organized. I love using these. So when you're ready to send out your questionnaire, I hit send and the link logo. And then I shorten the link so it's not extremely long. And then I hit copy. And it shows me on the bottom that I have copied it. And then I put it in the Snapchat group chat, which I will talk about later on in the video. But this is what you'll see when people have answered. So in the middle, you'll go to your responses. And you see I have 10. And it will show you a summary of all of the answers together. So as you can see, everyone's name. that Who has done it. And then some people will not use their right name. That was Corbin. And then you will see what day works best. So you can see that it was a tie for Saturday and Sunday. I went ahead and chose Saturday because a lot of people work the next day after Sunday, that Monday. So then will you be bringing anyone? It just gives you a little bar graph of what people said and answered. And then are you comfortable contributing to the meal? 90% of the people said yes. And then it gives you all the answers of what people said if they're contributing to the meal or not and like what they would like to bring a lot of people just said anything and then do you like sweet potatoes yes or no it was 50 50 so i'll probably just make a small batch of them but yeah those are all the answers you can also go to the question and see the question answers individually um and it'll just show you everyone's answers i don't really like that way i like to look at them as the individual option so like for Callie she put her name Sunday worked best for her she's not bringing anybody and she is comfortable contributing this is what she would like to bring or whatever I needed and then yes she does like sweet potatoes so super easy I really like this it's really organized I 10 out of 10 would recommend to use this when planning an event once I have made that Google form I go ahead and put everyone in a group chat I usually do mine on snapchat because it's everyone can see each other's names on snapchat you're not gonna have people with random people's numbers it just kind of gets confusing and just name it friendsgiving 2022 last year's was friendsgiving 2021 um usually i have about the same people but uh, i just put everyone in that group chat i give them a week to fill up that google form i always give reminders throughout the week saying hey guys i want to have all my answers ready by this day, just sending out like one or two reminders throughout that week. And if you still don't have people who have answered that Google form, this can be very frustrating. I just go ahead and message them individually, or I just ask them the main questions that I really care about and go from there. We have our guest list, our Google form and our questions. Let's continue. Now that we have people answering our Google form, we can make a food and dessert list. What do you want at your Friendsgiving? What desserts do you want at your Friendsgiving? What drinks do you want at your Friendsgiving? Make your friends participate because that kind of makes it a lot more fun is with friends bring their own dish and it puts a lot less work on you as the host. Like we asked in our questionnaire, are you comfortable with bringing a dish? If people said no, that is totally okay. But majority of the time people will say, yes, I am fine with bringing a dish. Um, a lot of my friends are saying whatever you need, I'll be more than happy to bring. And some people will specifically say what they want to bring. So let's make a food list. At my friend's giving, I wanted turkey, ham, mashed potatoes, mac and cheese, green bean casserole, corn, gravy, stuffing, sweet potatoes, rolls, cranberries, and martinelli. For my desserts, I wanted apple pie, pumpkin pie, and cookies and then I had someone request if they could bring pumpkin bars as well as ice cream. Like I said, my Friendsgiving is gonna be a lot more bigger than most people's Friendsgivings, but that's my own problem. The more food, the more variety, the more options for people, the better I feel like. A lot of people in my friend group say, whatever you need, I will bring. And I just had a few people who requested to bring a certain dish instead of me giving them one or giving the option to bring one of my dishes that I've wanted incorporated into my Friendsgiving. Okay, now let's say it's been a week 
and your friends have all answered your questionnaires, you have reached out to everybody. Um, people have said they can come, some people said they can't come. Now I'm gonna use another trick that helps me keep things very organized is Google Docs. Dots? Docs. Google Docs. I'm gonna show you what I do in my Google Docs to assign people what dish to bring for Friendsgiving and it makes it a lot more organized. Um, of course, you could just write out the person's name and then the dish that they are bringing, but I like to visually see everything. I'm a visual learner. Uh, I love to see everything and it makes, makes it a lot more easier in my opinion. Um, but you do what you want to do, but this is how I do it and I'm going to show you. Okay, like we did before, we're just going to type in Google and then go to the dots on the top right corner and then go to Google Docs. It's the blue page. There you will see that there are some templates. I'm just gonna go to my page that I made last year. Friendsgiving sign up, oh, nope, that's not 2022. Friendsgiving sign up sheet, but this is updated. Um, I just go ahead and choose some images of the foods that I wanted contributed into the meal. Some of them are from last year, I just left them in there. But as you can see, there's two pages of food that are already signed up for. So like you can see, I put this the name of the food right under the page. Um, for example, stuffing, I wrote the name, and then Corbin and Jamie are going to bring that. Brandon is bringing mac and cheese, Dylan is bringing pumpkin pie, Lexi apple pie, pumpkin bars from Cali, as well as ice cream. Um, you can see that I am bringing sweet potatoes on the bottom. Um, but like for mashed potatoes, Hallie and Selena are bringing those, but that's just kind of what it looks for. Um, like yesterday I went to Walmart and I saw that Martinelli's were on sale, so I went ahead and bought them. So I'll just go ahead and write that I am bringing the Martinelli's. So that's what I do. This is probably very unnecessary, but it's just more organized in my opinion. Um, for me, but go ahead and do what is more organized for you if that's just writing the name in the dish. Now that we have assigned our dishes to our friends, let's now worry about our decor, our seating, and our tables and bringing it all together. With this being my third time hosting a Friendsgiving, I save a lot of my decor and stuff um, to use for the next year. A lot of my stuff is from the Dollar Tree and Target and a few things from Amazon. I like to make my tables very decorative. My grandma also has a ton of decorations that I love to borrow for my centerpieces for tables and decorations to put around the house. I use our decorations that my mom and I have for just our house in general. I have tubs full of decorations and stuff just for my Friendsgivings or my Christmas parties and I save them so I can just reuse them and not having to buy new stuff every single year, which has really saved a lot of moolah, as well as buying all my stuff from the Dollar Tree because they actually have some really good things. Like I said before, I love to go all out for my parties. I love a lot of decorations. I have really cute banners. I have really cute balloons that I like to like throw around everywhere. Sometimes I get helium tanks and have floating balloons. Um, this year, I'm kind of doing a little bit more of a laid back Friendsgiving and not going all out and just saving money because I have some trips coming up and weddings coming up. So I have to save a good amount of money. I still want my Friendsgiving to be super cute and super fun. So I'm just going to go off of the stuff I have and then just get the essential things that I need. With that being said, I went ahead and made a list of things that I know that I'm absolutely going to need and things that I already have that I've used in the years past. Things that I already have contain of dessert plates, napkins, decorations, small bowls, medium bowls, two serving spoons, spoons, knives, jello shot cups, I have 11, large circle bowls, dessert bag, multicolored balloons, and placemats. A list of things that I already have that I've absolutely used in my previous Friendsgiving. Things that I absolutely know that I need, and some of these I have already gotten, that's why they have a store them is an estimation jar, scratch tickets, forks, plates, champagne glasses, pumpkin drawing prize, find a turkey prize, don't say prize, and I need to order my tables and chairs. This is something that we'll get into next, but that's something I absolutely need to do here soon. Just a reminder, this is stuff that you absolutely don't need, but I like having and in my Friendsgiving part two video, you will see how I just bring it all together. And of course you see that in my needs list that I need to get prizes and that's because we are going to be doing some games and entertainment. Um, but just use stuff that you already have if you have any fall decorations. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. Um, ooh, 
Something I need is tablecloths that I just thought of. So I'm going to go ahead and add that to my list. That's a part of my planning process is knowing what I have and what I need in order to feel organized. Um, I love to be organized and I love everything to be ready like a week before the event. And so making lists is something that is very useful for me. So that is what I have done so far. This part is not very helpful, I feel like, but this is just something that I do each year to help myself. What sucks about me telling you now about how to plan a Friendsgiving is that everything in stores right now is Christmas because they're always a month ahead of everything, which is so annoying, but um, you can still find a lot of stuff on Amazon when looking for stuff for Friendsgiving. And then some stuff I also get from Etsy, so do what you want with that information. Next is ordering tables and chairs. And this by all means is nothing that you have to do, but this is something that I like to do because I personally don't have in places for people to eat. I have no dining room table in my house. We eat on the couch. After doing a lot of research from my area, I found a lady. The way I found her was through Facebook Marketplace. And I've only used her one time, but I'm planning on using her again. On my very first Friendsgiving, I did not order table and chairs and I made it work just fine. But I used my friends' tables that they have, but they don't have those tables anymore. And I ha I said, BYOC, bring your own chair. And a lot of my friends brought um, camping chairs and it was just too crowded and everyone was squished together and it was very claustrophobic. So then my second year of hosting Friendsgiving, I did the tables and chairs and it was amazing. Everyone had their own space. It wasn't so crowded. I 10 out of 10 recommend ordering tables and chairs, but, but by all means, you do not have to. Now that we have brought everything together from our guest list to who's bringing what dish, our decor, our seating and our tables, this next part is absolutely optional. My family loves to play games and when you win a game, you win a prize. So I incorporate that into all of my parties from my 21st birthday, a viewing party, my other friends givings. I love to play games and then give them a prize. So this is what I'm gonna do this year. I'm not gonna give like a lot of detail because I don't wanna give everything away, but I will tell you what I'm doing this year. But first, let me tell you about what I kind of do for the prizes and then I will show you the game. So each year I get a basket and I fill it up with stuff and each basket kind of has a theme. Uh, previous years I have done like all stuff to wash your cars with for the boys and then I've done like a bath set for the girls or like if the boys want to take baths as well. Um, but I just fill up these baskets with a bunch of stuff. Sometimes I fill them up with scratch tickets and a bunch of candy. I do like a movie themed one where I fill it up with popcorn, snacks, candies, and like a drink. Um, but yeah, those are kind of like the options I do for my prizes. But I haven't picked out my prizes yet. Like I, like I said before, I'm still planning. <laughs> this year I'm doing four games and here's the number one game. My friends love this game every time I do it and it's find the leaf. I had three white leaves around the house. The first three people to find it gets a prize because they did find the leaves. Game number two is most creative pumpkin. Um, this is a new one this year. I thought it would be kind of fun to show everyone's like artistic side. I'm gonna give everyone 10 to 15 minutes to draw a pumpkin. We're gonna hang them up on the wall and everyone's gonna vote for the best pumpkin. Whoever gets the most votes wins a prize. The third game I have never done before, but at my preschool that I work out, we do a thing called estimation jar. This is also a baby shower game that a lot of people do, but this year I just filled it up with a ton of candy and they have to guess how much candy is in the jar. And I'm also gonna be taping a scratch ticket on top and whoever is the closest wins the jar of candy and a scratch ticket. The fourth and last game is a game that I have done at every single event that I have ever hosted, every single party I've hosted, and it is so much fun. In the beginning, once you arrive to the party, you get a clothespin and you have three words that you cannot say throughout the night. If you ever say that word and you're caught saying that word, you get your clothespin taken away. Whoever, ha whoever has the most clothespins by the end of the night wins a prize. So those are the four games I'm playing. Some of them go throughout the whole night and some are just like, let's sit down and chill and color together. Like I said before, games and prizes are totally optional, but a lot of my friends like to do the games and prizes. So that is what I just keep doing at everything I host. So yeah. 
But as of right now, that's everything that I have for my Friendsgiving. I love to plan a month before my Friendsgiving just to make sure I have everything and I'm not feeling rushed. Um, I've already gotten my turkey and the ham because that is what I am in charge of. And I'm just ready to have a fun Friendsgiving with everybody. Like I said, this is gonna be a two part video, um, how I planned it and then how my planning brought it all together. And I'll vlog my day of setting up everything of my Friendsgiving. So yeah. All right, I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching. I hope this video was very helpful. If you're, if this is your first time planning your Friendsgiving or if you wanted more ideas for your Friendsgiving or how to make it more organized, I hope this video just helped you. Um, but if you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, subscribe, hit that bell to get notified when I post. And all my social media links are linked down below if you wanna go follow me on there. Happy fall, y'all. I'm ready for some food. I'm so excited for this year's Friendsgiving. A lot of my friends are flying in this year because we've all kind of moved, which is very sad, but I'm super excited to have everyone come together and all hang out again. Um, but yeah, I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next week with a brand new video. Bye, happy Halloween.